So um, it's uh, it's gone eight, so we'll start. And today, uh, it's good to see you all. Sorry, start by saying that. Good to see you all. And also anybody who tunes in on the recording, it's good to see you as well. Uh, and today we're going to do the Metta Bhavana meditation, which is the loving kindness meditation. Loving kindness for ourselves and others. Uh, all of us, in fact. Um, and on a Wednesday, we do this practice just for ourselves, uh, which uh, I think is really important in a way because, well, not in a way, it's just really important because if we don't uh, have a, a reasonable regard for ourselves, then it's very difficult to have a positive view of the world. And I've got a poem here that I want to read that I've just come across uh, actually from a friend on Facebook. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's, I shall read it on Wednesday because I think it's particularly pertinent to the Wednesday meditation. But it's, it's um, I think it's pertinent to this one as well. It's pertinent to ourselves and the way we view other people because uh, other people are exactly as we are in this respect, in the, as the poem outlines. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it. And it's called A Child of Heaven and Earth. And it's by somebody called John Wellwood. And I'm just going to clear my throat before I start. So, um, so here we go. As a child of heaven and earth, you are a mix of infinite openness and finite limitation. This means that you are both wonderful and difficult at the same time. You are flawed. You are stuck in old patterns. You become carried away with yourself. Indeed, you are quite impossible in many ways. And still, you are beautiful beyond measure. For the core of what you are is fashioned out of love that potent blend of openness, warmth, and clear, transparent presence. Boundless love always seems to sparkle through your limited form. So I think that's really beautiful and very true. It's certainly in my, uh, in, as far as I'm concerned. And um, I think we're all like this. We, uh, And this is why we're, following the spiritual path. This is why we're meditating, isn't it? We're trying to um, dig a bit deeper. We're trying to let go of some of these conditioned habits of uh, reacting to the world that we have, uh, reacting to other people, of being unkind, of being awkward, of being difficult. Uh, all these are caused by our fear uh, of our limited form. And meditation is really about trying to uh, let go of that limited form and to make contact with something that is very, very special and very mysterious. And for the want of a better word, you could call it kindness. You could call it loving kindness. Um, you could call it enlightenment or awakening as well. But in essence, um, it's awareness and loving kindness, um, uh, pure awareness and pure loving kindness. And obviously we're a long way from that. I'm a long way from that. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that we can't start moving and keep moving towards it. And that's what this meditation is about. It's uh, in the first stage, it's about accepting ourselves. And in stages two, three and four, it's about accepting other people, even people that we have difficulty with. Um, so that's what we're aiming to do with this meditation. It's about, uh, certainly it's about trying to radiate love into the world as we meditate. But a lot of it is about seeing how our uh, limitations and dealing with them, are, well, seeing them, just seeing them is enough and that helps us to deal with them. If we see our limitations, we can go beyond them. If we don't see them, there's no chance of us going beyond them. 
So what we're doing in this meditation is seeing our limitations, seeing the bits of us that react to other people, uh, or at least are indifferent to other people. And just noticing that and being aware of it starts to change us. So it's quite magical. And it's this is a very radical meditation, as I keep saying. It's... Uh, it's, it really subverts the, uh, the limited human form and takes us somewhere else if we keep doing it. Okay, so I've said enough now. Uh, let's get on with the meditation. So make sure you're comfortable. Uh, maybe take a few deep breaths to begin with, if you wish. Just breathing in fully, holding it for a few seconds and then breathing out completely. And just doing that a few times. And as you do it, relaxing as much as you can in your mind. Allowing your body to be relaxed as you breathe out. Giving up the weight of your body to the bed or the floor, the chair, the cushion. Just noticing how you are right now. Mentally, emotionally, and physically. And however you are, just accepting that that's how it is for you right now without wanting to change it in any way, without pushing it away, without getting too caught up in it. It's just a fact. It's the way you are right now. And that's okay. Bringing our awareness to the upper body to the chest and just noticing as always the rising and falling of the chest as we breathe. And also the sensations of the breath in the lungs and the throat. Just very calming to be with the sensations of the breath in the upper body. Moving our attention behind the rib cage towards the bottom, bottom of the rib cage, just behind there. In the middle of our chest is the heart center, the chitta. The place where we feel our positive emotions. The place where our wisdom lies, actually. We just listen to it. We're just aware of this chitta, this heart center. You might bring to mind somebody that you love or a, a pet of some kind. Somebody that stirs you up positively. 
And just see what happens in this heart center. It should feel, I could feel really pleasant, warm, wholesome. And if you can't feel that, then just stay open to it uh, appearing at some point. If you can feel it, don't do anything with it. Just allow it to be there. Allow it to spread through your body. Can't force it. So in the first stage of this practice, we're just going to just going to reflect on our own lives and our own sense of being. We have these limited selves that are difficult and difficult for us, as well as sometimes maybe difficult for others. Maybe we can just acknowledge that to begin with. But this limited self is just a collection of habits and conditioning from the past mostly brought about through a sense of fear or dissatisfaction. They're not who we really are. There's nothing wrong with them because they exist. Our limited form, our limited self is what it is and it's not our fault. So can we just accept ourselves as we are, but acknowledge that we can change, acknowledge that there are things we'd like to change. So acknowledging the things about ourselves that we'd like to change in our behavior particularly, but acknowledging them with kindness and love. They're not our fault. We've nothing to be um, upset about with them. We don't need to beat ourselves up. But we're just seeing them very clearly. And just by seeing them, they will begin to change. That's all we need to do.
So wishing ourselves well, wishing ourselves just as we are, every happiness, accepting ourselves for now, just as we are, with kindness and love. So in the second stage, we're going to bring to mind uh, a good friend, somebody that we really love. Just seeing how that affects our heart center, how that makes us feel in our heart center or any other part of our body. Probably feels good but not necessarily. <laughs> so just bring in this friend to mind in whatever way we can. And just seeing that they too are the same as us. They too are battling with their limitations. Often finding that their limitations, their reactions and habits cause them suffering and pain and upset. And life is painful sometimes as well as joyful sometimes so can we wish them well in the lives wish them freedom from at least some of their habits and limitations and difficulties And we have a sense of real loving kindness towards this other human being, just like ourselves.
in the third stage we bring to mind um, a stranger <clears throat> traditionally called a neutral person somebody we neither like nor dislike but who we see quite frequently um, on the streets uh, maybe on public transport maybe it's a neighbor or a postie or a, somebody in the shop and just bringing them to mind as an image or a sense of them if we can't do the image and seeing what happens what kind of connection can we make with them might be that we can't make much of a connection and if that's the case it's fine we might we might connect with them but mostly we find it difficult with people we don't know um, they don't really touch our lives very much <clears throat> So it's quite understandable that we don't connect with them very easily. Yet, this person is just like us in so many ways. They too have the limitations brought on by conditioning and habits, just ways of being in the world that cause them difficulties sometimes so their lives like ours are very much up and down They're full of happiness and joy sometimes pain and suffering at other times they too would like to be happier So can we see these strangers as they are, as they really are, beyond the superficial image and wish them well, wish them happiness in their lives and freedom from difficulties. Just having a sense of kindness, and love towards them. And in the fourth stage, we're 
going to bring to mind uh, somebody that we have difficulty with. Somebody that, <clears throat> not somebody we've fallen about out with badly, that's too much, but somebody that we just don't really like being around that makes us feel uncomfortable. Somebody that we've perhaps had a, a minor tiff with. Somebody we just don't get on with, we don't like them. <laughs> so in this stage, I'm not asking you to to begin to like this person you can have whatever sense of liking or not liking that's not that's not this practice what i'm suggesting is that we can even though we don't like them even though they make us comfort uncomfortable uh, and uh, can we see that they too are limited they too suffer from the conditioning and habits and reactions that come from their past. And perhaps we meet these regularly when we see them. <clears throat> we see these things that create them difficulty. So they too want to be happy. They too would like to be able to live the lives without the difficulties. They too create pain and suffering for themselves as well as joy. And we see some of that perhaps in this difficult person. And they also cause us to be unhappy to an extent. They also cause us to suffer when we actually are with them. So we can have a lot of compassion for them and for ourselves. Maybe we can see that they are more than we think they are. We don't have to like them, but we can look beyond the superficial image that we normally see. So can we wish this person well? Can we wish them freedom from suffering and happiness in the life? Can we have a sense of loving kindness towards them in spite of the way we feel about them?
And in the final stage, we bring all four people together, ourselves, the good friend, the stranger, and the person we have difficulty with. And you see that although superficially we're very different, uh, and maybe in some qualities we're very different too, but fundamentally deep down we all have this sense of difficulty and unsatisfactoriness in our life that creates suffering and unhappiness and it's not our fault and it's not their fault it's just our human condition it stems from our conditioning and our habits And if we begin to acknowledge our habits, we can change and we can be happy much, much more. We can find more joy and contentment in our lives. So can we wish all four of us uh, well in our lives? wish for all of us a happier life, free from suffering. Free from pain. Can we have a sense of loving kindness to all four of us? And then maybe we can spread that loving kindness out to the world, to all human beings in the world, to all animals, birds, water creatures, insects, all living beings, every single one of them doing the best to live the lives with the conditions they've been given. Every single one of them sometimes full of happiness, sometimes full of sadness, grief, disappointment or anger. All of us struggling sometimes with our habits and limitations. So can we wish all these living beings in the world, can we wish them well? Can we shower them with loving kindness? As a child of heaven and earth, you are a mix of infinite openness and finite limitation. This means that you are both wonderful and difficult at the same time. You are flawed. You are stuck in old patterns. You become carried away with yourself. Indeed, you are quite impossible in many ways. And still, you are beautiful beyond measure, for the core of what you are is fashioned out of love, that potent blend of openness and warmth, and clear, transparent presence. Boundless love always seems to sparkle through your limited form.
So I think that poem is so true. And if only we can let this openness, um, this beauty in the core of our being out, if only we can let this boundless love that we have deep inside free, uh, that we cover up so much with other things. Uh, so fantastic to do this Metta Bhavana meditation. It's, uh, it's a really radical practice and to be doing it is radical. To be doing it is really unusual and uh, in itself is going to make a difference. So thank you for coming. Uh, welcome also to Julia and Kamal who joined us later. Um, uh, and, uh, and yes, that's it. <laughs> so thank you very much. It's good to have, the, have you with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. And I'll be back tomorrow at eight o'clock. And I think we're doing a body, uh, body scan tomorrow, body awareness meditation to start the weekend off. So uh, if you can make it, I'll see you then. Uh, but have a really good day. Uh, enjoy the warm weather as much as you can. And um, yeah, just take care. And lots of love to you all.